Chapter 1. You can eat what you want and stay slim. All it takes is the right mindset. Have you ever noticed that some people are just naturally slim? And we're not talking about skinny Instagrammers and models whose slender physiques come from eating disorders, drug addiction, and airbrushing, but rather regular people who can maintain a slim figure no matter what they eat. Did you know that you too can eat whatever you want anytime you want and still lose weight and stay slim? Yes, you can. All you have to do is make some minor changes to your habits and you're golden. You'll understand how to go about it by the time you finish reading this summary. First, let's take a look at why you aren't thin yet. According to Paul McKenna, three main behavioral patterns keep people from living happily at their desired weight. The first pattern is obsessive dieting. A diet is a way of eating that dictates what, where, when, and how much you eat. The truth is, diets don't work. Studies have shown that over 90% of people who attempt to lose weight by dieting fail. The more diets people try and fail at, the more they start believing that they're doomed to be overweight for life. You've probably been through a series of weight loss programs and you didn't get your desired result. Don't worry, you did nothing wrong. That's just the way the human body is wired. Forget about dieting forever. Diets are nothing but preparatory courses in how to get fat and feel like a failure. Paul McKenna The second pattern is emotional eating. Many times people eat because they're bored or lonely or sad, not because they're hungry. One thing about eating based on emotions is that you'll never feel satisfied. You were never hungry for food in the first place, so you'll never feel full. Faulty programming is the last pattern. If you're currently carrying a few extra pounds, it's not your fault. It's the natural result of your current mental programming and no diet can change that. The only way to lose weight and stay slim is to change your mindset about food. Fortunately, there are just four golden rules you need to follow to create a healthy eating habit. You'll learn more about each rule in the following chapters. Chapter 2. Depriving yourself of food when hungry puts your body in fat-storing mode. The key to becoming naturally thin is to introduce four new habits into your life. Paul McKenna calls these habits the four golden rules for deciding when to eat, what to eat, how to eat it, and how much to eat. Rule number one, eat whenever you are hungry. If you've ever seen a camel, you'll notice they have a huge hump at their back. That hump is mainly a reservoir of fat. Camels store fats because they have no idea how long they'll have to go between each meal. Your body does the same when you choose not to eat when you're hungry. In fact, if you've been starving yourself for a while now, all in the name of dieting, there is a high chance your body is now in fat storage mode. When the body is deprived of food, it freaks out and goes into survival mode. Thinking there is a famine, the body begins to grab more fat from whatever foods you do eat and put it where it can store it until later. These excess fats will be deposited in your belly if you're a man and your hips and thighs if you're a woman. This is one of the reasons why thin people eat a lot but never get fat. They aren't starving themselves, so their bodies often eliminate the excess fat that comes from their food. All you need to do to reset your body's innate wisdom is to eat whenever you feel truly hungry. Paul McKenna Paul McKenna recommends that you use the hunger scale to know exactly when to start eating and when to stop. Take a few moments to look at the scale below, which ranges from 1 to 10, and tune in to your body. How hungry are you right now? 1. Physically faint 2. Ravenous 3. Fairly hungry. 4. Slightly hungry. 5. Neutral. 6. Pleasantly satisfied. 7. Full. 8. Stuffed. 9. Bloated. 10. Nauseous. 
As a general rule, you should eat whenever you notice yourself between 3 and 4 on the scale. That's when you are fairly hungry but before you become ravenous. If you wait until you're ravenous or physically faint, your body will go into survival mode and you'll end up eating more than your body needs and storing the excess as fat. Chapter 3 Don't deprive your body of what it wants. Eat whatever you want whenever you feel like it. In the 1930s, researchers gathered a group of toddlers and gave them unlimited access to a wide variety of food, ranging from sweets to vegetables. For one month, each kid was allowed to create their own diet based on their own sense of what they wanted to eat and when. At the end of the study, the researchers discovered that each of the children ended up eating what was considered to be a balanced diet over the course of the month. Rule number two, do not eat what you think you should, eat what you really want. You see, whenever you're craving any kind of food, that's just your body telling you exactly what it needs at that particular moment. But as soon as you buy into the narrative that some foods are bad for you and start avoiding them, you upset the natural balance of your relationship to such foods. Once you put the forbidden label on any food, rather than want it less, it instantly becomes more attractive to you. This will result in an inner battle between your positive intention and your resistance to being controlled, and it can be very exhausting. So eat anything you want whenever you want, provided the hunger is not emotionally driven. No food is off limits to you. As you begin to make peace with food and pay close attention to your body's needs, you experience freedom from the tension and guilt that come from not following your intuition. You may have been through many diet programs where you were told to throw out any foods high in fat, sugar, carbohydrates, or whatever food you were being forbidden to eat. Paul McKenna is recommending a radically different approach. Go to your refrigerator and throw out any food that you don't find delicious. Throw out the Diet Cokes, dump the low-fat yogurts, and all the low-carb, cardboard-tasting crap. If sugar-free popsicles aren't absolutely your thing, throw them out. When next you're hungry, eat whatever makes you happy. Do you feel like having some pasta? Go for it! Are you craving cake and ice cream? Bon appetit! As long as hunger is authentic, eat whatever you want and relish every single bite. Chapter 4 While eating, concentrate on your food and make every bite a conscious choice. People who are overweight often go into a kind of eating trance where they guzzle as much food as they can without actually chewing or tasting anything. The reason for this is that whenever we do something essential for our survival, like eating or making love, our brain rewards us with feel-good neurochemicals such as serotonin. So overweight people chunk down as much food as they can just to get the serotonin high. Unfortunately, because they are eating unconsciously, they're never aware when their body starts telling them to stop eating. So they keep on stuffing their faces, expanding their stomachs, and putting on weight. And even though they feel temporarily high from cramming in lots of food, they feel fat and guilty afterward. Rule number three, eat consciously and savor every bite. One of the unique features of Paul McKenna's approach to weight loss is that you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, so long as you fully enjoy it. You must really savor the taste and enjoy the wonderful textures and sensations as you thoroughly chew each mouthful. Of course, in order to fully enjoy your food, you have to eat consciously. One way to do this is to put your knife and fork down between every mouthful. This will give your body time to notice what it's doing. If you're not using cutlery, Put down the sandwich or burger between each mouthful. You can continue from where you left off once your mouth is empty. This way, you make every bite a conscious choice, eating your food like a gourmet meal and savoring every mouthful. You will eat slowly and consciously enough to actually taste it and notice the feeling of being full. 
over the next couple of weeks, try to reduce your eating speed to about half of what it used to be and chew each mouthful thoroughly. Paul McKenna Did you know? One of the easiest ways to eat consciously is to eliminate distractions while eating and concentrate only on your food. Chapter 5 No rule says you must always clear your plate. Stop eating when you have the slightest feeling that you're full. As humans, our bodies are designed to eat when we're hungry and stop when we're satisfied. However, the vast majority of us have been conditioned to eat until we think we're full. If you want to lose weight effortlessly and stay slim, you need to start working with your body and not against it. You must sharpen your visceral senses so you can stop eating when you're full and feel good for the rest of the day. Rule number four, stop eating when you think you're full. Naturally, when you've had enough of what you're eating, your stomach starts giving you a sensation that says, I'm satisfied, that's enough. Like most people, you'll experience it as a gentle, clear, satisfying sensation in the area below your rib cage, but just above your stomach. Even if you miss this feeling of satiety when it first happens, you'll notice that each subsequent bite of food becomes far less enjoyable than the previous one. It is essential that as soon as you start to notice this discomfort, you stop eating immediately, no matter how much or how little food is left on your plate. A major habit that gets in the way of listening to your body is being a lifetime member of what Paul McKenna calls the Clean Plate Club. Members of this club think that they're somehow breaking the law if they don't finish everything put in front of them. These people think they're doing the world a lot of good by clearing their plates every time they eat, no matter how full they are. The truth is, if you really want to play your part in putting an end to world hunger, learn to manage your eating so that you eat when you're hungry, enjoy every bite, and stop as soon as you start getting the feeling of satiety. You'll end up eating so much less that there'll be more for everyone else. The hunger scale that was illustrated in a previous chapter of this summary is a great tool that can help you know when enough is enough. Normally, you'll want to stop eating around 6 or 7 on the hunger scale, when you are feeling pleasantly satisfied or full but not yet stuffed or bloated. Don't live in the extreme areas of the hunger scale ever again. If you're hungry, eat. You must eat what you really want, however, not what you think you should. Eat consciously and enjoy every mouthful, and then, once again, when you have the slightest feeling that you're full, stop. Chapter 6. Self-image is a self-fulfilling prophecy. See yourself thin. Now you know all the golden rules you need to follow to lose weight and stay slim. One thing that is equally important, however, is the way you see yourself. As Paul McKenna says, we're not only what we eat, but what we think as well. Your self-image is basically how you imagine yourself. It's that main determinant of everything about you, from how motivated, intelligent, and confident you are willing to let yourself be. It is even what determines how much weight you are willing to carry around with you or to lose. Our self-image has such a powerful influence on our behavior because it is self-reinforcing. For instance, you've probably met people who aren't classically good-looking but have an aura of attractiveness. Because they see themselves as attractive, they're self-confident. They carry themselves well and dress to bring out their most attractive features. This self-confidence makes them attractive to others who relate with them positively, which further reinforces their attractive self-image. In the same vein, there are many other people who think of themselves as unattractive and unconsciously sabotage any attempts to appear attractive. Either way, your self-image has worked perfectly, proving itself right by guiding you to act consistently with who you believe yourself to be. Nearly every overweight person has a self-image that says they'll never be slim. 
While they may say they'd like to be thin, they often believe that slim people are somehow different from them, and the goal seems almost unattainable. The way to change the pattern is by getting into the habit of focusing your attention on what you actually do want. Instead of fixating on how overweight you are right now, start focusing exclusively on what you want, a slim, fit, and healthy body. Describe to yourself exactly what it is that you want concerning your body. For instance, I want to lose 20 kg in 6 months. Or, I want to be able to wear a nice dress. Or, I want to look great without my clothes on. The more you clarify and vividly imagine exactly what it is you want for yourself, the more you stimulate your unconscious mind to find and explore every possible opportunity to move toward your goal. You'll essentially be training your mind and body to give you what you desire. Chapter 7. Your metabolism isn't fixed. You can boost it by doing things that increase your heart rate and keep your blood flowing. One of the greatest lies in the weight loss world is the myth of metabolism, which says that it will be harder for some people to lose weight than others because of their genetically predetermined basal metabolic rate. However, recent studies show that your metabolic rate is not fixed and it changes throughout your life based on how you eat and use your body. Basically, your metabolism is the speed at which your body produces energy. The faster your metabolism, the faster your body burns off excess fat, regardless of whether that fat comes from a steak or your hips, thighs, and stomach. Your basal metabolic rate is the rate at which your metabolism is running at any particular moment, and it is the primary determinant of how many calories your body will burn off throughout the day. According to Dr. Susan Jebb, a British expert in the study of obesity, one major way to supercharge your metabolism is through exercise. Now, before you throw your hands up in horror and start thinking about running on a track or pumping iron, you need to realize this. Exercise, in essence, is anything you do that causes you to breathe more deeply than you normally would and increase your heart rate. The truth is, if you get out of bed in the morning and walk around on your two feet, you're already exercising. The key to boosting your metabolism and in the process increasing the rate at which your body burns through calories and fat is simply to move more than you are doing right now. You don't have to start carrying a 50 kg cast iron barbell or start doing push-ups until your muscles ache all over. You do not have to do anything else other than to move your body. Do it whenever you get the chance. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Park a couple of blocks away from the office and walk to work. Dance, cycle, play sports. You only have one body, so move it and have fun while doing so. Try as much as you can to take 10,000 steps or more daily. The more you walk, the more calories you consume, and the increased speed of your metabolism from those extra steps will continue to burn away your fat while you rest or sleep. Conclusion In our society today, people are getting increasingly obsessed with dieting, yet we have nothing to show for it. People are still overweight and disheartened by their bodies. A series of studies have shown that over 90% of people who attempt to lose weight by dieting fail. This has only gone to prove that dieting doesn't work at all. Starving yourself is the worst possible way to try and lose weight. In fact, it's safe to say that dieting is nothing but a preparatory phase for weight gain. The problem is that most people who successfully go through a diet program end up putting on more weight than before they went on it. What's worse, the more people try different diet regimens and fail at it, the more they start believing that they are never going to lose weight. The key to becoming slim and staying that way is simply to adopt four new life-changing habits, four golden rules that will help you decide when to eat, what to eat, how to eat it, and how much you eat. One, 
Eat when you're hungry. Two, eat what you actually want. Three, eat consciously and enjoy each mouthful. Four, stop eating when you think you're full. These small habits coupled with regular exercise and a positive self-image will make a huge difference in your life. You'll easily shed the extra pounds you've been carrying around for a long time and stay slim. Try this. Check your refrigerator and throw out any food that doesn't inspire you to eat it. No matter what others might think about such food, as long as eating it doesn't make you happy, toss it. When next you're hungry, eat what delights you. So long as the hunger is authentic, eat whatever you want and savor every single bite. Remember, no food is off limits for you ever again.